Through interviews with Chicago's rising stars, we've uncovered that our city's art scene has become inseparable from its activism. In fact, in his 1997 poem, Cesar Cruz said art's purpose is to comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. A developing percentage of Chicago's galleries and studios include a social justice message. Artists, through their craft, are picking up the slack for the political absence in their segregated, homophobic, or under-resourced communities. There is this push and pull between cultural preservation and recognizing that the segregation in Chicago comes with a lot of economic disparity. When I do my art, I definitely am conscious of not only the look, but like the way the people in my art look and making sure that I'm handling whatever narratives that those people bring with extreme care in the way I represent them. What's up, my name's Pigeon and um, I'm an intersex activist and artist here in Chicago. I really just wanted to make something beautiful that people would feel proud of when they saw it on the wall or on a t-shirt. You know, when they say like the juices are flowing, that was really happening. And I was just like writing these down and then I would, um, went to the internet and I was looking for um, something beautiful to pair with those words. And then that evolved into like a t-shirt. There are a few t-shirts. My name is Laura Branch, also known as Lori Branch. I am a DJ and a writer and I produce independent films. Hi, I'm Paris, and you are? I'm Theodore, but you can call me Teddy. Oh, that's cute. And I'm Just Charles. Well, it's nice to meet you both, Teddy and Just Charles. The things that motivated me were uh, what was happening in my life. You know, I, I came of age in the, the time of AIDS. I had friends who were 19, 18, 20, 21 years old who were HIV positive and had very short lives. And so I realized that I needed to, to take what I understood as art and what was uh, my gift or my talent, you know, and try to apply that in such a way to bring attention for, to the people who had been forgotten. So today is an online art action on Twitter called Free Bree Chanel, and it's to have a bunch of people like us come together around the world, make art for Brisha with the hashtag Free Brisha Now. And I'm gonna be animating them a little bit in Photoshop with my rudimentary GIF making skills. So yeah, we're gonna see how it goes and contribute to the online action. The old word for intersex was hermaphrodite. And that has a lot of like associations with monsters and, and that kind of leads to a lot of doctors and families doing really messed up surgeries on intersex children for no health related reasons, just to make our bodies look different and fit some type of stereotype. I mean, some standard. I would just like make these signs and, and just bring them with me. Um, and people would be like, she's always doing art. Like, and then like community organizations doing organizing work would kind of contact me like, yo, can you make this thing for us? And from there, a lot of other artists in movement spaces were kind of having these similar experiences. So we kind of formed this group, which is for the People Artists Collective. Lately, I have been doing a lot of animation. When people see like an animated GIF on their Facebook feed, they're not expecting it to have some like super serious message about our current state and possibly a call to action. And I think it kind of shocks people like, oh, I didn't expect that from this medium and that makes them pay attention more. You know, we've got a rich history um, that, is, that is uniquely ours. The art form in, in terms of music helps to integrate people uh, because it is a music of community, it's a music of love, and that, that, show, that crosses all race and gender and boundaries. Art is a way to express love and to express uh, community, um, and I see it as a way to bring people together, um, as a way to, uh, to express myself. I mean, just like, like I think any other artist, it's your voice. Um, so I do that in, in writing scripts, I do that in um, producing the films that I've produced, and certainly through DJing. Uh, in my avenue, in my lane in house music and dance music, 
uh, got its cultural roots here. And so if you ask anyone internationally, you know, about the origins of this particular style of, of music, they always point to Chicago. The impact that I would love to see that comes from any event that I would, I would create is that people walk away different than they came in. So, I mean, and you, that sounds cliche when you say if you touch one person, but I really feel that. My art is trying to take that, that negative stereotype about intersex people and flip it upside down and reclaim it. There's a lot of research, there's a lot of books, um, a lot of stuff like that, but there's a lack of like visual art and visuals going on in the community, and I want to offer that to, to the people in my community so that they have images that they can hold on to and be proud of. I think the most important thing I want people to take away when they see my art is that whatever you're looking at at that moment or hearing or reading whatever form of my art that you're consuming at that time that you are engaging in someone else's process of healing um, and that that is a super sacred thing.